Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stuff I Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. And for this month, although we kind of already had a movie that we talked about, it wasn't necessarily the feature we were going to do for this month, but it was mm-hmm. still fun because 10 yes. Things I Hate About You, I Heart It. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. hey. But we are switching it up for a spoiler Saturday or Saturday spoiler of a recently acclaimed 2023 movie, Past Lives. So if you haven't watched it and you don't want to know about it, pause here. And I think it is, it is, I know, streaming currently on Paramount Plus, not a sponsor right now. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, go and watch it because it is a really good movie. It was written and directed by Celine Song. And this movie was her feature directorial debut and has amassed a lot of praise for its unique but normalized, I guess, take of a love triangle and childhood first loves. So a lot of the articles you might have seen where she's talking about it was this idea that she wanted to take a love triangle. Mm-hmm. But to but in a normal context where there's no necessarily good guy or bad guy and there's no like dramatic fallouts or, you know, betrayals. Just yeah. everyday normal conversations. And of course, it's an A24 film. So if you know anything about A24, yeah, no, it's going to have that very like indie style uh, movie. But this movie was nominated for several awards, including the Academy Awards for Best Picture and the Golden Globes, and has been named on several lists for top 10 films of 2023. I think it's at like a 90 to 95% on Rotten Tomatoes still. People really, really like this film. To me, it kind of felt along the lines of Lost in Translation or um, The Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind, which it does talk about in the movie. Yeah. BT mm-hmm. dubs. Mm-hmm. It has that feel, like that um, almost like you're peering into someone else's yes. private life. Yes. That was one of the things I noted. It's, it's beautifully shot, but there is a lot of imagery of like windows or frames or like diverging pathways but yes a lot of like you're looking in mm-hmm. somehow mm-hmm. to to what's what's happening on screen right um the movie stars Greta Lee as the adult Nora or Naeyoung Moon and Tao Yu as Haesung and then John Magaro as Arthur it opens uh, as if you're a spectator uh, and you're viewing these three people talking together and trying to guess who they are and uh, who they are to each other. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go into the plot. But yes, again, spoiler, because <laughs> if we're going to talk all about it, we're going to talk about the themes and we're going to talk about the feels, because I feel like it resonates a lot with so many people in different ways. Um, and yes, it is both in Korean and English, which was really funny for me, who watches a lot of K-drama to be like, oh, but this is an American film. <laughs> this is done by a Canadian uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, director, and it is portrayed by uh, Korean American people. That I'm like, oh, this is such a weird dynamic, but I <laughs> truly appreciated it. So, uh, Na Young and her family are soon immigrating to Canada for better opportunities. And though she's really excited for the new move with the hopes of being able to win a Nobel Prize, which is what she tells everyone, she hasn't told her current love, Haesung, uh, with a a last date for the two of them. Haesung discovers that Naeyoung is moving and he, as he walks her to her house for the last time, all he says is goodbye, ciao, ja. Um, and soon we jump to 12 years later where Naeyoung, who now goes by Nora, she's working in the writing and literature world. Um, and in a moment of conversation with her mother, she decides to look up friends from Korea and finds out that Haesung has been looking for her for quite some time. Um, and soon they reconnect and sparks fly, but with both of them having busy lives and not being able to connect outside of video call, Nora decides to end it for a while, as she says. Soon we find out that Nora has met someone through her fellowship, Arthur, and um, Hei Sung has met someone while he was traveling in China. Um, and Nora uh, explains the Korean legend of Inyan, and she says, it's an Inyan if two strangers even walk by each other in the street and their clothes accidentally brush because it means there must have been something between them in their past lives. 
if two people get married, they say it's because there are then 8,000 layers of inyan over 8,000 lifetimes, uh, which, of course, this is kind of the basis of this movie. It's kind of like the underlying idea. So jump to 12 years later, and we find out that Nora and Arthur are married. Arthur is doing well and has published his book, while Nora in, is in the middle of her doing her play. And around that time, Hei Sung is about to decides to go and visit New York and wants to reconnect with Nora. That's not what he said, tells people, of course, but... <laughs> We find out that that is the point. And after finally seeing each other face to face, we have an interweaving of who they were and who they have become. Hei Sung realizes that Arthur is a great guy who truly loves Nora. And though she has changed, she is still the same in many ways. Um, and even though the Nayoung of youth still loves Hei Sung, Nora knows she has left Nayoung behind and she's become the Nora who is in New York living with her husband in a small apartment as a Korean American. And then we have the ending scene where she drops him off to his Uber. And she walks on a long path back to Arthur, where she cries and mourns, uh, I guess, the loss of Nae Young a little bit. And then they go home. And that's the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the movie, Annie? I really liked it. Um, I, I, as I said, I thought it was shot beautifully. And I love the idea, because this is, I think about this a lot, too of just, like, missed opportunities. What if I had done this? What if I had done this? Like, I think it's impossible as human beings to not think about that sometimes. And I did, like, honestly appreciate the complexity, but also normalcy of the love triangle, where it was, like, no real villain. It was just sort of, this is how it is. This is how it turned out. And you can have a sadness for that. And I liked at the end when she was upset that Arthur, like, didn't, he wasn't mad about it. He was just, like, come inside um i i liked that i really did appreciate appreciate that and like seeing them connect at these different points in their life because there are pretty big time jumps right. um but uh, yeah that idea really resonated with me too of those other paths you didn't take and what could have happened right mm -hmm. right i think there's a lot to be said about letting go of your past and who moves forward and who doesn't move forward. So it's kind of interesting because you have that uh, dichotomy of what Haesung is going through, who stayed in Korea and stayed in that pathway, where as where Nora slash Naeyoung has gone to somewhere else and kind of became a whole different cultural person. And so what that looks like for her, and she kept proceeding forward. Uh, not that Haesung doesn't do that. It's one of those things where... I've always said I'd rather be the one to leave than to stay because it feels empty when something's missing. You know what I mean? But if you're doing a new adventure, everything's new. Nothing's missing because you don't know what's coming next. So it's kind of that level of what you see in that, like, split in paths. Um, so Sung always kind of thought of Nayang as if what would have happened had she stayed? What would have happened if this is? And he says that during one point, you know, would we have gotten married? Would we have had children? Would we, you know, what would our lives been like? Um, but yeah, so with that, we'll jump into some of the themes. And of course, the love theme is definitely there. Young love, first love, you know. And um, for a lot of Korean dramas, first love is a huge, huge, like, detail into the point that it almost takes over all of it, like first loves trump any other love, mm -hmm. oddly, even if you're children. Like, it's got that connection. And I think that's kind of what you see with Hei Sung, always loving her and always knowing that she's that same girl. So, like, he'd ask, you know, she's last saying that she wanted to, uh, to win the Nobel Prize and not, Korean people don't. And then she talks about later she wants to win the Pulitzer because she's a writer. Mm -hmm. And then it moves on to her wanting to win the Tony because she's doing plays, mm -hmm. you know, and he's like, you're the same. This is how you were before, except she was a crybaby and she no longer cries like that, mm -hmm. you know, to the point that when she told Arthur, I used to cry all the time. And he was like, really? Like mm -hmm. he was very shocked. Right. You know, mm -hmm. but that first love of remembering who she was at that beginning. And she even tells her mom as a kid, you know, yes, this is my boyfriend. Yes, I love him mm -hmm. type of thing even though she knew she was moving. Yeah. 
Yeah. And um, they were very, she was from the beginning very competitive and he mm -hmm. won like the basketball game was it like yeah. one time and she was like mad about it so it's it, it is interesting because she didn't really change but the way that she was always moving forward to the next thing like it catapulted her into this direction and it was it was sad because when they left when she left and Hey Sung found out like she was telling someone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's how he found out. Right. And they just walk home silently, which is mirrored at the end, kind of. It's a long walk. They get to these two pathways and then they split. And as you said, he just says goodbye and she just walks up the stairs and away. But it is when you're a kid and you're figuring that stuff out. I get why those childhood loves make such an impression that you can mm -hmm. remember them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, and with that, I guess the true love or the the adult love, because uh -huh. I mean, she really doesn't harp on any concept of the one or you know true love in in general. It just happened that her and Arthur, and I think she truly loves him, and she says that, but that this level of like he wonders, you know, also had I not been the one at the fellowship, which is the Inyan. Who else would you have been with? Would you have thought about going back with Sung? Like, what would have happened? Type of conversation. And then, like, adult love and, and relationships. And it's not your typical romance or whatever, whatnot. It just the compromise and being together and loving each other and understanding each other. Like, that's the adult version. Mm -hmm. And though it looks different because she's, like, I don't know. And this could be just my own, like projection that she's so, like she feels like she's in love with him as much as she is in love with hey Sung, sorry not arthur but the fact that she is watching him watch her so seeing herself through his eyes yeah you know yeah which is interesting yeah. and i think it's interesting that arthur and you know both of them realizing in this adult love there's no bad guy like you know, um, he sung saying, I kind of wish you were a jerk. Yeah. But there's nothing for me to say. You seem like a really cool person. And in this relationship, you and I, this is our union as well. So yeah. it's not, I can't, you know, like I can't force anything. I wouldn't ever say anything. And there's nothing I would do to try to mess with the relationship. I just wanted to see, essentially. Mm -hmm. I guess assess the situation. And Arthur's the same way. Arthur, like, he seems like a cool guy. Yeah. And... Um... As we've been saying, I like how they handled that, where they communicated, Arthur communicated his insecurities about the whole thing, but was also like, no, it's your old friend. Like, go be with him. Like, having these adult relationships, and I, I do, we've talked about this before, but the whole thing of, you know, finding somebody as an adult does sometimes feel like, <laughs> difficult um so if you have i get what arthur's saying where like if it had been someone else um who's to say because that's how a lot of us meet people is that things like that but i mean they had a spark as you said they loved each other but it is like that question is always there and um it's also yeah hai sung was the one who was looking for her and I do think you're right about, for her, it was sort of a remembering who she was and thinking about what she could have been, who she could have been. Because he, yeah, he was more like stayed on this path that he had been on and she went a different way. So especially like at the end where they're having that conversation and I felt, I felt kind of bad for Arthur because he was just like... <laughs> Yeah, you should probably, it's all right, you go home. Um, <laughs> all right. But it was a very, like, you know, they were having these memories and, and thinking about what could have been. But, uh, yeah, as you said, adult relationships have this layer of, it's not always going to work like I thought it was mm -hmm. when I was a kid. Right.
I think the themes of youth were very apparent, um, like what you thought you wanted to what you grow. Like her talking about the different awards that she was going to win changed drastically as she grew up, what she was expecting, what she wanted, that they all changed. And the reality of what she wanted all changed. For, again, he sung, it literally was kind of the same. Like he trekked into what he called ordinary Everything was ordinary as expected. He went in his military um, time and he knew what it was going to be. He went to school. He knew what it was going to be. You know, he's making some money, but it's not as much. Um, Korean culture, adults live with their parents until they get married, essentially. And even still, they may still live with their parents. Um, and that's completely normal. And she talked about that. Like, that's the difference. But, like, he stayed, in, again, in the path that he knew from what he was as a kid to what he was an adult, Nora remembering her childhood to this, you know, and also like the fact that she only spoke Korean to those that she knew from childhood, including her mom, including Hae Sung. Mm -hmm. You know, it was very like obvious on those themes and and the differences that grew out, but there still was like the silent thought thoughtfulness in both youth and adulthood. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that. Um... When, like, when you look at a character like Nora and you see her as a child and you can just see her thinking about this future, and it can sound kind of silly where she's like, I want to win the Nobel Prize. But she does have that drive. So it's not, it's, I think it can sound silly when you're an adult, but, but when you're a kid, you do have those moments of thoughtfulness, silence. It's like thinking about what what I want my future to be, and it does change as you get older but she still had that like drive right. like even if it changed from the tony to whatever 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 it was still there right yeah which i thought was a really fascinating look at her her character right. and with that obviously the cultures were very much a prevalent part of their conversations whether it was just like her speaking in Korean to Sung and then trying to translate a little bit to Arthur and then Arthur trying to learn Korean so he could hear what she's saying to her parents and then like appreciating the food and and appreciating the family and the culture um, of course she makes a statement which was like on point for me I was like yeah this is a very big conversation about the differences like she talks about having Korean friends but they're all Korean American or Korean Canadian and they are very different from what she calls Korean Korean and I've said that too and that level of like he is truly Korean Korean and the differences are like him still living with his family and, and not going to get married until he's perfectly set or what he thinks is rich or what he thinks is uh, advantageous and then her talking about you know the um, understanding the languages and how it's different that he, you know, she has to talk to him in this language and then the differences are um, very, very obvious. Again, the legends like Inyun and whether she believes in that because Arthur's like, do you believe in this? She goes, no. That's, <laughs> that's silly. But this conversation that grows bigger and bigger in, in that there is a divide. Like, as much as she remembers and loves Sung as from the, the old, that was, again, Nayang, that was not Nora. That is no longer Nora. And that she literally says, I left Nayang with you. You know, and she she exists, but in you essentially. Like she because of the way he remembered her. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. But that's that cultural difference of like her being very Korean Korean when she lived there to acclimating to um Canada, to acclimating to the US and being a little different. And you have this like conversation that I've seen in so much social media, when they literally argue with each other, I've seen Korean Americans having to defend why when we talk about the microaggressions in the U.S. and the Koreans being like, that's the true people who live in Korea not understanding what a big deal it is because they've never understood that. And they kind of, I guess, admire and desire white culture white American culture in so many ways that they don't understand that. So it's, it's interesting because that there is a big divide. And I've, I've seen that recently in conversations with um, African-Americans or the black community in the U.S. versus the uh, black community in the U.K. There's been a big conversation and divide about the differences and like comparing each other's lives and talking about who's like this and that. And you're like, but the thing is, you might not understand the cultural differences when you're placed in a whole different level of culture. Um, and when you come, like, 
I would not necessarily, and I've said this many times, that I've been told by Korean people that I'm weird <laughs> because I am not like Korean people. Obviously, I was raised in a white community and having that level of like differences. So being just Korean American, even if you are raised by a Korean family, is still different from being Korean and living in South Korea. So like it's such a whole conversation that she has. And you can see that divide when she's talking to Arthur. Like it's so apparent versus when she's talking to Hae Sung. Like you're watching this happen. You are watching the uh, divide where she's talking Korean, Korean, you know what I'm saying? Versus Korean American. So it's such an interesting way of seeing those cultural differences play out literally in front of you at a bar. <laughs> yes. Yes, because again, it starts with spectators trying to figure out like who they are to each other, what's going yeah. on. Who's in a relationship with whom? Yes, yes. Um, and I love that it starts that way because the whole movie, you're trying to figure out like... Okay, Who's going to be with whom? Yeah, exactly. Because we are trained to look for the like most dramatic yeah. like, love triangle. And it really wasn't that. It really wasn't. But that is, I mean, that it was a great visual representation of her her past life and her current life, of her identity in Korea and her identity in the U.S. and having it sort of split yeah. like this. Um, it was really good yeah. visual. It was. And then there's kind of this le level of like destiny, obviously. That's the whole point of Inyun. Uh, also, it's this morning. Like, I put those two together because you have this, like, beginning and what you think could happen, and then when it doesn't happen and letting it go, that's also a part of that destiny. The end scene, which I did read about, uh, like, they didn't know when the Uber was actually coming. Like, she didn't, Celine Song didn't tell them when. So mm -hmm. that scene of them just waiting is yeah. legitimately, like, Try, them trying to figure out when it's coming to the shot with Greta Lee walking was just taken in one shot. Mm -hmm. um, and she was, like, keeping it together, keeping it together, and then, like, the the actual cry, which apparently was, like, one of the conversations, like, throughout the whole thing, you feel like you could just cry at any moment. <laughs> How did you keep it together? Like, she's like, and I, I waited it out and had that moment at the end, which was exactly, like, that feeling that, it, like, for me, there's films that I watch that aren't sad, that are sad to me. Again, like, so they mentioned Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind. She talks about uh, Manta when they uh, when he they go to meet together in the Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind. So he, Hae-sung, goes and watches it because uh, he wants to know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but that, to me, was one of the saddest films in yeah. the end because all I could see was they're going to repeat their mistakes and they're going to be miserable. Like, they don't want to forget the good times either, but they're going to repeat their mistakes. That's what I had seen in that movie. Mm -hmm. So in this movie, as where she is crying and ending, it didn't feel sad. It just felt final. Yeah, it felt kind of cathartic. Like, yeah. okay, I've, I've like examined this thing that I thought maybe could have been a chance in another life. And it makes me sad that I didn't get it in some ways. But in other ways, I'm really happy with what I have. Right. So it was much more like kind of an acknowledgement. It just yeah. felt much more of a letting herself acknowledge that maybe that could have been something. But uh, it's not going to be. And she likes yeah. what she has. Right. And mm. she, she's there with what she needs. The biggest uh, theme is the relationships that we see um, and the results of those relationships, but also kind of like the humanity in those relationships. So you see Arthur, and I think we don't want to leave this out, but him feeling insecure, uh, but at the same time, not want to hold her back, but just waiting. Like he, he yeah. literally is just waiting to see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. and making sure that he is the guy that he's always been, whether it feels insecure, whether he's feeling like, and I, I could get this, that he's missing a small link to her life. So here's mm -hmm. this big part of her life where she was in South Korea, when she was raised in South Korea, she is still raised in the culture of South Korea with her parents. That's not a part of his life, and he's never seen that as a thing, the cultural divide in that, but trying to get into it, trying to learn it. Um, and trying to understand it and then seeing when someone does connect to that. So therefore, mm -hmm. he's kind of just like taken aback, feeling a little bit insecure because that's such a huge part of her. 
Mm -hmm. But at the same time, being secure enough to wait and hold back. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I did appreciate that, that there was a lot of communication of, you know, in that instance, him being open about like, yeah, I, I, it makes me sad. I can't be a part of this, a, a part of this part of your life. Him being a little saying, essentially, I'm insecure, but this is like your childhood friend. Please go. Like, I appreciate that they have those conversations. And I, I do think one of the big things about this movie is waiting. There's a lot of waiting that sometimes works out well and sometimes it, not badly, but like for uh, High Sung, like he only said goodbye when she left. Mm -hmm. She didn't say anything. It was a much more like waiting to see what the other mm -hmm. person would do. So I think that's an interesting theme throughout as well of sort of seeing what the other person is going to do. Right. There definitely was. Mm -hmm. Hey Sung realizing he has to let go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was, it was kind of one of those main things where he was uh, leaving. He did an amazing job. To did an amazing job of being the awkward visitor. Like <laughs> he, he did such a good job with this. The original actor was going to be uh, Choi Ushik, who uh, was in Parasite. So oh. he was the star in Parasite, but I don't know what happened. Apparently, he was signed on in 2020, and then uh, Taeyu got the uh, role in the stead, which is interesting to me because there's a huge age difference between him and Greta Lee. So I was like, that would have been a... But he's actually a Canadian-born Korean mm -hmm. um, that moved back to South Korea. So I was like, as a whole underlying, I wonder if it would have taken a whole different... Right. conversation if that mm -hmm. had happened um but i think they did an amazing job that he really jumped into that awkwardness so well but like mm -hmm. still anticipating he had that anticipation awkward loving guy like he, he did, an, did an amazing job with that role and then of course Greta Lee and her all of her greatness who I loved her I've loved her since I saw her on New Girl so she came in playing a character as Nick's girlfriend in New Girl and I was just excited to see an Asian woman <laughs> being seen not as a fetish mm -hmm. but just in a normal relationship in the story and I was like whoa look at that mm -hmm. look at you mm -hmm. Unlike Supernatural. Anyway, but like, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I really appreciated seeing her just being, uh, playing those roles when she played in Russian Doll. I loved her character in that. So seeing her in this role just was like amazing. And she did a phenomenal job. And because I've only seen her typically in like comedies. Mm -hmm. So seeing her in this role and really like taking it on and really like understanding that divide, that the slash of culture, because I think that's such a big conversation that we don't have, especially with AAPI, what that looks like and how different it really is, how unique that uh, culture is to come into from one culture, but living in another culture. So acclimating to both, uh, but at the same time, not losing either. Mm -hmm. And she and Greta Lee did an amazing job, I think, in portraying that. Also, knowing that she did a good job in, like, loving both men. Like, loving them as the two separate people, as being Nora, as being Nayang. Like, she did a great job and portraying almost like a split personality in the same role. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, she did. Uh, it was really, it was, it was fun to see her in those different contexts of, like, you got your relationship that she's pretty much settled in with Arthur. And it's happy with, but it's like settled in. Yeah. And then Hai Sun comes back and you just kind of see this excitement of like her so eager to to catch up. Um, but it is interesting too, that dynamic of when someone you, you haven't seen since childhood like comes to visit you and maybe they never left your hometown or something. And there is a weirdness to it where you're like, <laughs> uh, we, where the things you're talking about can feel so out of touch for the other person mm -hmm. where you're like talking about friends that they don't know or like things mm -hmm. that you do that they don't know um, and she Nora was very much like trying to keep it in his realm of you know relive, reliving these things or, or stuff like that but uh, and they did have it was interesting to me that they had some kind of like I wouldn't call them tense but like 
you got married. Right. <laughs> you were dating someone. And you date. Like, she made sure to correct him very quickly. Like, yes. And you got a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Don't play. Don't act like I'm the only one here. Moving on. <laughs> yes. But it's almost like they stayed, as we've been saying, they kind of stayed in the past. And that's where they were really good. Mm-hmm. But when you come to the future, to the present, it can be sort of jarring to right. when you realize you've just really went down different paths. You've lived different lives. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, and I think that conversation, when we have the initial secondary breakup and her making that point, I'm not coming to Korea anytime soon. You're not coming into the U.S. anytime soon. What is this? We're not going to bring this together. Not, neither one of us can get to the point of sacrificing our current livelihoods for the other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what, you know, like, this is not feasible. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I, as you said, she was the one, which, by the way, they were using Skype, Samantha. Um, <laughs> that was also 2010. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> 2010, Skype was the only thing that existed at that point, ma'am. <laughs> I don't care at all. <laughs> um <laughs> When she, Nora was like, we have to take a, we have to take a Uh, break. It was kind of interesting because they weren't in a relationship in any way, really. But they mm -hmm. just had this, like, chemistry and it was so exciting and they were talking to Mm -hmm. each other all the time. But, yeah, she brought up that and was like, when is it going to be? We're going to see each other. It's not going to work out. It's going to be years. Right. If at all. So, I need to go focus. I need to go back and focus on it what I'm doing here. Um, I thought that was really interesting that they had kind of a, like, non-breakup breakup. Right. Let's put it on hold. <laughs> right. It was causing too much confusion. Like, she, yeah. and she said that. She was like, I'm looking up flights and wanting to be there, but I can't yeah. be there. Like, this is not working because I have to be present here. Yeah. Um, and And I can't sacrifice and you can't sacrifice for us to be together. So... Mm-hmm. And yeah, you're right. They never really have breakups. They just say bye. They give the Irish goodbye <laughs> is what I like to call it. <laughs> the Irish listeners are furiously <laughs> typing right now. I have a feeling a lot of the Irish people are like, yeah, I just leave. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's one way to do it for sure. <laughs> I'm just going to slip away uh, or mm-hmm. ghosting. But they didn't ghost because uh, she actually yeah. talked about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I think it's it's obviously um, a coming to the end and like, that's every point. And then that final end, I think, was the closure. Like they may speak every now and again, but it's not going to be with any yeah. uh, question marks. Unless right. one of them gets divorced. Unless she gets divorced. And he doesn't get <laughs> the married. Sequel. Then oh, that's no. the sequel. That's the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the next one. Past lives do. Yes. <laughs> Redo. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, what might have been? Uh, oh. They could just do like a thing where they have a parallel world. And then we'll do that view. Because I was like, you know, this is reminiscent to that. Which the yeah. Daniel Brothers did talk about that and love this movie. Without the fantastical part. It's that reality yeah. part. <laughs> I thought that, too, because, you know, you see the main characters in that movie talking about divorce and seeing all mm-hmm. the paths they could have gone down. Right. The one where Michelle Yeoh, like, stays and becomes a movie star, action star. Right. right. And they meet back up and they are talking about what could have been. Right. Which is the reality of the movie we're watching. But, right. yeah, I, I definitely was like, this, this got the similarities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also like that the emotional scenes... To me, wasn't emotional as emotional as the people like the rock scene. Everybody really, really lost it, and I was like, "It's cute though." I mean, I really loved it. I was like, "I don't know if it's that emotional." I get it. Maybe I just don't have the depth to this. <laughs> it was just the same yeah. with some of the things in past lives. I was like, "I get it." It's it's like melancholy, yeah. but it's not. Yeah, mournful to me. Like those are yeah. two different conversations. Um. But yeah, and I, I have to throw out, because I did talk about Greta Lee being in all the comedies. She was also in What, um, what We Do in the Shadows yes. as well, and she was phenomenal. That was that a great too. episode. <laughs> this is why I say, like, I just know her for the comedy. So seeing yeah. her really be at the forefront of this was beautiful. I mm-hmm. hope we have more movies like this. And I really love um, that, that 
that Korean films and foreign films are coming out. Uh, I love that uh, Asian films are coming out. We need to see Monkey Man. That has nothing to do with feminism necessarily, but it does, from okay. what I understand. But... I love seeing like Eastern films come into light and getting accolades uh, with throughout different cultures because the U.S. is such a diverse population. It should it should be reminiscent to all of this. So being able to watch different levels of uh, cultures is so important. So things like Everything Everywhere All at Once, things like Minari, which I haven't watched because I think that's going to be too sad for me. I got to get into that, but I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> um, things like Past Lives, you know, when we talked about uh, films like Bended, like Beckham White was important for what it was. Like, it's a silly, fun film, but it's culturally impactful. And, and seeing things like that is so impactful because this is the same thing with Past Lives. There's no big, like, political statement here. It's just about a different cultural life, it, but mixing mm-hmm. uh, with what we do know and what we are familiar with. So we have the New York scene, Mm -hmm. but we have a different cultural uh, aspect to this conversation. And I think that's what I love about this film is that, yes, it's relatable in so many ways for so many different groups of people. And um, we we have to have the conversation what it looks like for immigration. And when we talk about the and, and this is the whole Koreans believing coming into uh, North America, whether it's Canada or to the U.S., is going to give you more opportunities. And they say mm-hmm. that at the mm-hmm. very beginning, because that was that ideal that we come through um, and find better and bigger opportunities here in the U.S. or in Canada, as this, this was based. Mm-hmm. Um, and Celine Song really putting some depth to that and, and uh, personality to that conversation. So, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Highly recommend it. As you say, I felt, I found it more melancholy and than sad, but it was also just relatable. I think we all yeah. have those feelings of thinking what could about have been. what could have been. Um, yeah. I mean, I think about that often. Like, well, what would have happened if I didn't get adopted? I yeah. guess I wouldn't be here. <laughs> right. I mean, I think we all... I think we all think about those things. So highly recommend listeners. If you have any thoughts about this or any suggestions, uh, we do have a list. Uh, You can email us at stuffmediamomstuff at iheartmedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at momstuffpodcast or on Instagram and TikTok at Stuff I Never Told You. We're also on YouTube. We have a tea public store and a book you can get wherever you get your books. Thanks as always to our super producer, Christine, our executive producer, Maya, and our contributor, Joey. Thank you. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, you can check out the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 